Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 55 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of lima thrombosis. The patient was a man who had previous bypass 19 years prior and presented with chest discomfort, positive cardiac biomarkers, and uh, uh, some ST segment elevation in the anterior precordial leads with some reciprocal ST changes as well as lateral ST depressions. He was sent for emergent diagnostic coronary angiography. This demonstrated a CTO of the right coronary artery, CTO of the LAD, significant lesion into the circumflex. And then there was a patent uh, saphenous vein graft with the obtuse marginal branch. This infrequent to have those graft markers, but those can be very, very useful. But here is the culprit. The culprit actually was the lima graft. There was a distal occlusion with an intraluminal filling defect, suggestive of thrombus. So although we say that the left internal mammary grafts have excellent long-term patency, here's an example where almost 20 years after coronary bypass, the lima occludes. How do we manage uh, such an occlusive lesion with thrombus? Standard approach to thrombus management. First of all, within the coagulation, uh, the patient uh, did receive heparin. He also received uh, epitifipatide and was loaded on ticagrelor. And then for restoring undergrade flow, there was no undergrade flow. So the plan is to wire through and see if we can restore some undergrade blood flow. At the same time, the patient had a systolic pressure of 90, so he's now in the pre-shock stage. And um, although he did not have um, uh, signs of um, uh, poor mentation or cool extremities, he was clearly becoming hemodynamically stable. That's why he was uh, started on an intraortic balloon pump as the initial support. So we now have the balloon pump in place. We were able to wire using a field RFC polymer jacketed wire through a careful microcatheter. This is an example of using CTO techniques with microcatheter and wire that can be used for acute occlusions as well. And then uh, we dilated with a small balloon that unfortunately didn't restore much of the flow and that's why we did the intravascular ultrasound that demonstrated um, uh, the presence of some intraluminal filling defects that was right at the distal part of the graft, presumably this is all thrombus, and that's extending into the uh, LAD distal to the anastomosis. Unfortunately, there was only flow into a diagonal branch with not much flow going under gray into the LAD. So we decided to do aspiration. We did multiple rounds of uh, aspiration thrombectomy. We did retrieve some red thrombus initially, but despite multiple rounds of aspiration, there remained a poor uh, TM0 to 1 flow into the LAD. And the question is what to do next in a patient like this that is resistant and there is still residual thrombus. One approach is to just deploy a stent which could uh, squeeze the thrombus and restore undergrade flow, but can also cause distal embolization. Another possibility is um, to continue aspiration for example, using something like the penumbra thrombectomy system or use laser. And in this case, we decided to try with the laser in an attempt to vaporize thrombus and potentially restore some undergrade flow. Unfortunately, what we saw immediately after is uh, extravasation of contrast. So we do have a perforation in the distal portion of the lima. This possibly was due to some tortuosity distally, but it's hard to know the exact lesion. The bottom line is we do have a perforation, and although people used to think that perforations in previous bypass patients are not very dangerous, we now know that it's actually the exact opposite. Those perforations could lead to loculated effusions. A little higher, like in this case, they might cause to mediastinal hemorrhage. So clearly this is not a benign event and the perforation needs to be treated. How do we treat it? The first attempt is to inflate a balloon to stop the extravasation, give fluids, do pericardiosynthesis if needed, and then in a case of large vessel perforation, as was the case in our patient, usually this is done by placing a covered stent. 
Importantly, we do not reverse the heparin until after all equipment is removed to avoid intraluminal thrombus formation. In this particular case, we were worried about placing a cover stand across the origin of this diagonal branch, and we knew that the perforation was a little higher up, so our initial intent was maybe put a stand, squeeze the thrombus, and then place a cover stand a little higher up without obstructing the flow to this fairly sizable diagonal branch. So after we did that, we did get fortunately undergrade flow. So this is an example of where stenting did help restore undergrade flow in a STEMI condition. And now we were able to place a graft master cover stand. And this case happened before the availability of PK papyrus. The stand fortunately was delivered easily. It's placed across that side of perforation and was deployed and there was some residual disease, so another drug eluting stand was placed more proximally. One of the potential advantages of this strategy, in which we have a graft master and some drug eluting stands, both inside and outside, is that the risk for stenosis might be minimized. After doing this, the patient did have TM3 flow into the LAD as well as a diagonal branch, there was no residual perforation and extravasation and the patient did have an uneventful recovery. His hemodynamics stabilized and the balloon pump could be removed. So there are several lessons from this case. The first one is that although rare, lima thrombosis can occur. There are, like every other thrombotic lesion, several ways to treat the thrombus by doing aspiration thrombectomy, balloon angioplasty, in this case, laser, which was done after failure of the previous attempts, did result in perforation, and that's why laser should probably be avoided in cases where there is tortuosity, as for example in Lima grafts. The, finally, by placing the stent, undergrade flow was restored. Second, regarding the case of um, uh, perforation, this was a large vessel perforation, and that was treated with a covered stent, a graft master, with um, out any residual bleeding into the pericardium or the mediastinal space. So for every perforation, the goal is to inflate the balloon immediately and then place a cover stand to stop the extravasation if the extravasation does not stop with prolonged balloon inflation. Thank you.